Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showcasing here my Weeping Bell Salazzle deck. This is definitely a very powerful deck in its own right because it is a deck filled up with mostly, if anything, our main attackers are all single prizes. So given that particular circumstance, we are definitely in quite a bit of an advantage here. And yes, I have to admit, all of our Pokemon are definitely very weak, so that is definitely one of our weaknesses there. But even so, this deck here combos out so well, um, I'm pretty much just going to show you right away. Of course, if you guys do end up enjoying this video, definitely drop a like, share, comment, and subscribe as well. It really does help out the channel, and if anything, just watch another video. But with that being said though, let's begin. So starting off, we're going to be playing four copies here of our Weeping Bell. And we're also going to be playing, of course, the four copies of our Bell Sprouts. These two particular cards are the essential cards to essentially get you started with the whole play. So you go into your Bell Sprouts, just wait for your next turn, and you could easily just evolve into your Weeping Bell. So what does Weeping Bell do? Well, this did come out a long time ago, so let's go over it a bit. All you're really going to be concerned about is Weeping Bell's ability. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you can make your opponent's active Pokemon burned and poisoned. That is definitely going to be quite devastating. So you've just put on two conditions onto your opponent and they also deal damage onto them as well. Definitely very powerful, definitely very fantastic. That's 20 damage already put onto the opponent's Pokemon. But with that being said, by itself, it's not going to be getting you anywhere. So let's move on to the next Pokemon. So this is where things actually get a little hot. So we have here four copies of Salandit, and we're gonna be playing our main card here, our main attacker, the four copies of Salazzle. So, Salazzle, what does it do? Well, it is only going to require two colorless energy, so it definitely is quite a powerful attack. And with that being said, it deals 90 damage for each special condition affecting your opponent's active Pokemon. Remember, when we just played the Weeping Bell, we're already putting two onto the opponent. So, that guarantees 180 damage plus the burn and the poison, that's at least 200 damage. If your opponent's Pokemon is 200 damage or less, it is very likely going to be knocked out. Of course, with that being said, you may need to do two attacks. However, with two attacks, it's very likely that you'll be finishing off the opponent. That being said, the whole idea is that because you're playing single prizes, even if it does take you two attacks to knock out the opponent's Pokemon, it doesn't matter because if you're knocking out their big stuff, you could be getting two prize cards, perhaps even three if you're knocking out their VMAXs. So if anything, you're still going to have a huge advantage in this particular case if you're going to be racing the opponents to take prize cards. Now, for cards that I sort of use to support my deck a bit, I'm playing two particular Pokemon, and that is the Suicune V and the Empoleon V. These cards essentially just allow me to push a bit more and slow down the opponent. The Suicune V obviously allows me to get more cards if I'm in a bricky situation, and the Empoleon V allows me to kind of lock out my opponent's uh, Pokemon if it needs to be the case so if we happen to have a slower game these two cards definitely get the job done but because they're also both at 210 hp they can also sit there and sort of take a bit of that damage for you as well if you'd find that you don't need either of them you could always just use them as discard fodder that's okay moving on to supporters i'm going to be playing here uh, one copy of Iono, I'm going to be playing here the four copies of Professor's Research and I also have the three copies of Boss's Orders as well. I find that these are essentially the staples of the supporters and I tend to stick to these ratios no matter what deck I'm really playing. So on to item cards, I'm going to be playing four copies here of the Battle VIP Pass. This is definitely a 
really good card to really just uh, set you up immediately throughout the game and look even if you draw into these later down the line just discard it as fodder that's okay we're also going to be playing here four copies of chromomatic again just to focus on the consistency you want to search up your deck as much as possible and uh, this particular card definitely is the one to do it then we're going to be playing here two copies of lost vacuum dealing with all those annoying tools dealing with any of the annoying stadiums out there and of course i'm playing the one copy of the heavy ball plus the forest seal stone as well both allowing me to really uh, do quite a bit out there now keep in mind forest seal stone is only going to be applicable to a V Pokemon so that's why I'm playing the Suicune V and the Empoleon V is because that will only be the option available for me to use the Forest Seal Stone for. Alright so let's continue building up the consistency we got Rescue Carrier hey let's say that we need to get cards into the discard because we need to activate that professor's research well, this card here essentially allows you to bring it all back, so definitely very nice here. Uh, mind you, Weeping Bell and the Salazzle are both 90 HP or less, definitely making it uh, very viable for this particular card to work in the deck. I'm also going to be uh, taking advantage of that low HP, and I'll be using Level Ball instead. It's better than Ultra Ball in this case, because Ultra Ball requires you to discard, Level Ball simply searches directly for the card you need, so why bother playing the Ultra Ball at all? Instead, just play these two cards and you can definitely get everything done. Now, I want to establish a bit of control. Any cards I don't need, I'll just simply get rid of it as part of fodder. I am playing four copies here of Pokemon Catcher. It gives me more sort of control over my opponents if the boss's orders are supporters that are only allowed to be played once at least an item card like the pokemon catcher can give me a lot more control sure i could play escape rope but the issue of escape rope is you forcefully switch your own as well and sometimes you don't have anything out there because you're playing single prizes and everything's getting knocked out however you want the opponents Pokemon out so my solution to that was to play the Pokemon catches instead and to wrap things up with the items I'm going to be playing two copies here of the choice belt this allows me to do 30 more damage onto my opponent's active V Pokemon very likely that it would be the case anyway but it's sort of to make up for a particular card that we'll get to later down the line as we move on to the energies Alright, so on to energies. The reason why I was playing the choice belts was to make up for the weakness behind double turbo energy. Double turbo energy gives you two energy and that's what Salazzle wants. It's a very powerful card. But it does also deal 20 less damage to your opponent's Pokemon. You don't want that. So why not just use the choice belts instead and add on 30 more damage onto the opponent. That sort of makes up for this particular card's weakness. It's a little slow, well actually it's a little fast, but it has a bit of a weakness in attack. But it all is made up for depending on what cards you choose to play. However, next up we're also going to be playing here two copies of Treasure Energy. Treasure Energy is a very nice card allowing you to again speed up the process. Hey, even if you draw into it, just attach it because Salazzle takes colorless energy. I'm also going to be playing Jet Energy. This card is a very nice card to do a bit of a switcheroo, but it's not an essential card in the deck. It's just a bit of a utility that I find to be quite helpful in certain situations. I'll finish things off here with the Lucky Energy. Lucky Energy is just a very nice card because you get to draw a card out of it and given that your Pokemon is only really needing colorless energy, lucky energy just uh, is the right card for this particular deck. But that kind of wraps it up for this whole deck here so uh, hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you have any suggestions on how you might want to improve it, uh, show me your build on 
the comment section down below. It's definitely very interesting to see that uh, everyone can have their own particular take on how a particular deck might be playing. So yeah, thanks for joining me today. This was definitely a very fun deck and again, similarly to the uh, Oshifu deck, I am going to be very sad to see this go and we're now going to have to look for a new deck. But that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I will see you all next time.